Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode in the Ultimate Track Guide series, a series where I let you know the tips and tricks to improve your lap times around various circuits and today we're at Brands Hatch Marine Kent, this is my home circuit, I live quite close to this circuit and to, uh, we're actually in a GT4 car for the first time in this series, obviously the previous two episodes have been in GT3 but with the release the new GT4 pack. I thought I would um, get get in them, you know, get tuning, put a couple of time trials in them to see how how fast they are compared with the GT3s. I think around here we're about eight or so seconds a lap slow, which isn't huge. It's quite a quite a small circuit. They're only 2.4 miles, um, only 10 or 10 or so corners really but it's very technical as you'll see when we we dive into the lap it's it's an extremely difficult circuit it's renowned for being difficult to learn uh, and even people who do thousands of laps around here and really really struggle with it so let's let's dive in and see what we can make of this it's coming along the start finish straight then we want to stay um roughly in the middle of the circuit and uh, coming up to paddock hill bend notoriously difficult and I've actually been in the gravel trap myself in this corner so I know the, the trials and tribulations for this. We're looking for this braking marker on the left hand side and, and actually we don't want to be all the way over to the left hand side of the circuit here. We want to be slightly in the middle where that green marker is that sees a lot of tyre marks to guide our journey through this corner and the reason for that is because it's got a it's got a really dirty camber at this corner. It's um, If you're too far on the outside you're just going to fall off the circuit into the gravel trap on to the left turn in properly you can see as i'm braking i'm still turning quite a lot but turning on that green tarmac on the left look for the curb on the inside you can straddle it slightly but not too much depends what car you are driving how low it is etc and you're looking for this curb on the outside where you can use all of the red and white curbing and some of the astro braking up into the hill two very obvious braking points here You've got obviously the bridge, the Brands Hatch sign above you. We've got the orange marker on the left and the right hand side of the track, and the uh, brake marker with the, the 100 meter board on it as well, uh, and the shadow. So, depending on what conditions um, you can use them, you're braking quite early and quite hard, um, aiming for the inside of the corner and letting the car run a little bit wider uh, in, during the, the center of the corner and then putting the power down early. This corner, I want to spend a bit of time on this one because it's it's notoriously difficult and I think a lot of people struggle with Graham Hill, Hill Bend in the weather, they don't know where to break. It's got a couple of pointers here for you to look at. We've got the sign on the right hand side, we've got that long curb which for some reason people assume is the breaking point for this corner. But we're actually going to be breaking before that brake marker on the right hand side. We're going to be braking extremely gently. It's not a full braking zone because you'll just understeer off the track. And then we're going to be changing down one gear. And at the point that you change down that gear, you you use the momentum of that gear shift to start turning into the corners. You'll you'll see. So down a gear. Now we turn. Aim for the post on the inside. You can take some curb. I took a little bit too much on that lap, but you can take some. And there's a lot of room on the exit. This one very similar. You've got a 100 meter braking board again. We're going to be actually going past this braking zone before we before we hit the brakes. But this next corner again, it's it's super difficult. And I think along the Grain Hill Belt, Surtees is probably the most difficult corner on on this track because you're kind of in no man's land for a lot of the a lot of the bend. If you go too wide on entry. While you might get a, a great exit on, on the outside, you're going to compromise your time through the corner. Although, if you brake too early and you turn in too early, you're, going to, you're just going to wipe all of your speed off. So, we're sort of in, in no man's land here, and, and we're looking for a point just um, on the inside. You see where those sort of markers are, the, the arrow markers, just to the left of those where I've put the green spot there. We're aiming for a point quite late on, uh, uh, as in terms of apexes, but we just need to carry our speed as much as we can. We're off throttle, we're off the brake we're just rolling through this corner nice and smooth start to get on the power as uh, and if you're not on full power by this point here where you can start to see the exit although it's up that little bit of um, a crest there if you're not on full power by this point then then you're doing something wrong out here because we need to stay full power all the way over that curve make sure you don't go too much on the right there because there's a nasty bump which catches a lot of people out um, but if you're not on full throttle by that point then you, you've got a real problem I just wanted to pause it here because we're going to run through the first sector again in full speed. So coming into the first sector, over the line, into sixth gear, looking for the brake marker, not all the way to the left-hand side of the track. Over the crest, turning on the, the Astro on the left-hand side, hook it up on the curb, full power downhill. 
looking for the Brands Hats Bridge, braking nice and hard, letting off, trail braking a little bit through here. As soon as you can see the exit, just power as much as you can. You can you've got a lot of time to correct the overseat there. Braking early in we think, using the change down in the car to um to get the nose of the car stuck in, so turning a lot of room on the exit, braking after the marker on the right hand side here. In no man's land, no man's land, now we can power on, now we can straighten our steering over the curb, and make sure you get back onto the middle of the circuit and, and we're through the extremely technical first um, half of that track. Uh, a lot of people like the overhead view that I did uh, last week, um, so I wanted to just add that in again. So coming up to this corner, you actually you take a relatively early apex. Don't go too wide, and as soon as you can cut back, you don't have to go over the curb. In fact, don't go over the curb because it will spin you around that, that second corner around Druids. Graham Hill Bend, there's a lot of room on exit, as you can see there. Uh, this is this is the one I really wanted to focus on. It's all about the exit here, but don't go too wide on entry. That late apex, just there, using all of the curb on the outside, but not staying on it, so you, so you get that... Um, but that bobble across, uh, which is just going to, it's just going to constrain your speed all the way down this this straight. So, I'm going to pause it to see you've got two markers go going into Hawthorns here. You've got the furthest brake marker there, the 100 meter board, and you've got this earlier one, the, the 200 meter board. And, and I actually like to use um, this earlier board, but I know a lot of people like to look at their braking marker as they're braking into it. So. And use the second one if you like. It's the braking points just be before it. We do switching down from sixth into fourth gear. It's quite a quick double shift. And as soon as you see this point on the inside, it's like a little kink in the curb. That's where you should be really getting back on the power. A lot of cars around Brands Hatch use quite a high diff, Excel diff preload. Uh, and because of that, you need to get on the power early so you can guide the back end of the car around this corner. You can use a lot more of the exit than I do. You can go all the way over this left-hand side curb, which I've highlighted in, in green there, and it doesn't really cost you any time. Again, very technical call of this one. There's a couple of braking points. So you've got the braking mark on the left-hand side and this sort of groove on the inside where the tyre markings are. There is obviously that orange... Um, brake marker on on the right hand side there the fencing to, to signify the sort of marshall's post but actually i find if i'm using that inside if i'm looking to the inside of the corner i, I really struggle to, to, to break properly so you need to straight line this corner as much as possible you can actually use far more on the exit of this corner than you think you can go all the way past this curb and while it may well um just just compromise your exit a little bit it's a it's a godsend if you turn in a little bit too early into into the right hand or into Westfields, and um, you've got a lot of room to just straighten out the steering, get the power on nicely. You can still carry some good speed into Dingle Den Dell and Sheen Curve, which are the next couple of corners. I um I just wanted to watch that from, uh, from above because actually, um while we feel like we're picking the power up relatively early on this right hander, if you just listen out there, it's it's relatively late in the corner that feels very early. So and again, look how much you can cut this and then run out wide and it doesn't compromise your exit. It's, it's absolutely crucial that you, you sort of remember that while you're going around that corner, actually. Let's just watch that again in, in real speed from inside the car then, braking just before the last marker on the left-hand side, picking up the power nice and early when you see that kink, going as far wide as you need to there, turning in, getting all the way over this curb, putting the power down, rolling a little bit out wide, and then we're into this final section. I'm, I want to pause it here just to compose ourselves because this final section through Sheen Curve, Sterlings and Clearways is, well this next corner is potentially the hardest corner on the track and it's one that a lot of people when they're under pressure really crack. We're looking for this green marker on the uh, the slight outside. A lot of people take too tight a line into this corner which compromises their entry into Sheen Curve and makes it more difficult than it needs to be. We're going to be braking in a straighter line which will make you more effective under the brakes and, 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 and easier to adjust as well. Still Marshall's post on the right hand side is the best braking marker I can find you but as I said before looking at the inside of the corner I find much difficult. I prefer to have braking markers on the outside so I, I use just I judge this just by feel uh, braking earlier than you think you do on the power before the curb as well which is really important like we said with the diff Watch it again in slow-mo, then you can see I pick up the power just before the curb, just to stabilise the back end of the car. You can roll it obviously wide, but do not go on the grass there. It is imperative that you don't go on the grass. Immediately you're into Sterling's. 
looking for the brake marker on the right hand side you're going to be braking just before that down into third gear it's imperative that you get your inside left wheel on this curb it will just guide you round sterling's so so well and what you can actually do is use it to 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 gauge when you're, going to, when you're going to put your throttle on as well so as soon as you come off that kerb on the inside should be when you're picking up the throttle and, and actually if you've done the right line you can go full power extremely quickly on sterling so it's it's less difficult if you just get on that kerb all the way out wide straight into fourth gear and you've got a slight breather into the last corner where we're looking for this final brake marker and you're going to brake just before this and again this is a corner that i like to Break more um, more gently than than a lot of people do. So we're, we're not full braking. We're doing a little bit of a trail off on the brakes, a little bit of trail braking. You're looking for this inside curb. I've done this in slow mo because it's quite quite a fast corner. Um, there's a little bump on the inside which you can actually you can actually take that um, in the car. You can go all the way over the curb. Depends what car you're in. You can do it in this Aston Martin GT4. So a bit more forgiving than some of the other GT4 and especially GT3 cars. So looking for the brake mark on the left. Get your car on the inside curve, use that to gauge where you are on the track and get full throttle into the final corner which is into clearways and Clark curve on the outside. Extremely easy to overspeed here, you need to pick up the throttle just as you go over the kink on the inside. Run it out wide but do not go over the grass because it's just going to suck you in and you're going to hit the ball there. So let's watch the lap um, again in full, um, super difficult paddock hill bend. You can go on the curb on the inside, but don't take too much. And if you are on that curb, you need to already be on the power so it stabilises the car nicely. Break at the shadow or under the bridge, depending on the conditions. And, and it was early on the power here. Use the diff to bring the back end of the car around. Breaking early, and you think you need to here, using the downshift of the car to get the car turned in. You really, I, t I took a little bit too much curb on that corner, but you get the idea. In no man's land, cruising around just off throttle. Now we go, as soon as we can see that apex, straighten up the steering, don't go too wide for too long uh, on that curve because you'll bobble and you'll lose half a second easily going up this straight which is, well, P Pilgrim's Drop and then up into Hawthorne Hill, into Hawthorns. As soon as you see that little kink in the curve, you should be full power. You've got a lot of room on the outside to use. Remember, you can cut this one and run out a lot wider which enables you to take more speed down this um, sort of into sheen curve and, and, and up the hill, braking straighter and less hard than you think you need to. Flick over to the right hand side of the track, get your car on the inside curve to gauge where you are as soon as you're off it, full power, and you're thinking about where you're going to brake for the last corner, which is the last braking marker, fourth gear, just cruising, and as soon as you hit the kick on the power, three quarters, two thirds power, and then as soon as you think you're free, get full power, get down to the inside of the track to shave off the final tenth. And away we go for a 130.3. I hope you guys found that useful to drop down into GT4 class for this track guide and obviously let me know in the comments what you thought and any subscriptions and, and shares and likes are very much appreciated. It really, really does help the channel. But for the time being, I'll shut up and, and uh, let you watch this aerial view lap, which a lot of people commented on last week. They thought it was a really good addition to the track card. So I'll let you watch this. Um, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next week um, for the next track card. See you later. Bye.